I'll give you a little introduction to inverse functions, and then we'll leave it at that. Before we actually talk about inverse functions, we have to talk about something called one-to-one. -one. Here's what one-to-one -one means. A function is one-to-one -one if every input has a unique output. What's unique mean? Only one. Only one of that happens. You guys are unique. Oh, you're special, right? Do you exist anywhere else in the world? Yes. You do? <laughs> you're awesome. Okay. There's no one else like me. There's no one else like me. All right. There's no one else like you. You are unique. Right? No one is exactly the same genome as, as, as you. No one has the same exact set of traits that you have. You with me on that? One to one means every input has a unique output that never happens again. It's just one of them. So one to one, a function is one to one if each input has a unique output. Let me give you a quick example. We'll talk about something called the horizontal line test and be done for our day. So we're going to pretend there's a function that has only four points. This is it. This is the entire function here. Four points. And here's another function we'll compare it to, OK? What I want you to do, these are these are points here. What's your uh, what's your x coordinate for this point? What's your y coordinate, everybody? X is are known as inputs, yes. Y's are known as outputs. What are your inputs here? Negative one. What are your outputs? Here. Three, one, zero, Here's what one to one says. It says you look at your outputs. For each different input, you must have a different output. So every output has to be unique, has to not happen again. Do any outputs happen twice? No. This is one to one. Read me your inputs here, ladies and gentlemen, please. Read me your inputs, please. Seven. No inputs. No, you <laughs> should go on. <laughs> Three, six, two, eight. What are your outputs, please? Two, three, fourteen, two. Do any of your outputs happen twice? Yes, two. If your inputs happen twice with a different output, it's not a function. If your outputs happen twice, it's not one to one. Do you understand the idea of one to one? Yes. Outputs are unique, they don't happen twice. Now, one thing that we can do, oh, we have a minute left, that's awesome. One thing that we can do, we can talk about this according to the horizontal line test. Now, you've already had something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test tells you whether something's a function or not. The horizontal line test will tell you whether something's one to one or not. So first thing, let me refresh your memory on vertical line test. Vertical line test says imagine a vertical line. If it hits the graph at more than one spot, it's not a function. Note that all of these are functions. Everyone passes the vertical line test. Do you agree with that? Okay, horizontal line test says instead of vertical, this means horizontal, check it. If the, if the horizontal line, any horizontal line, touches the graph 
at more than one spot. It's not one to one. And here's the reason. Here's the reason. Because if I have horizontal line, check it out. Horizontal line touches this at how many spots? That means you have the same output twice. Do you see it? Yep. Same output twice. That means this is not one to one. So the horizontal line test will tell you that. This is not one to one. Is this one one to one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. What do you think? Yeah. Horizontal. Mm -hmm. Does any of those touch it twice? No. That's one to one. How about this one? One to one or not, folks? What do you one think? To one, one, one. one to one. How about mm -hmm. how about this no. one? No. Definitely not. No. It's it's all I mean it's all the same point, right? This is not one to one. This is all the same output over and over and over and over and over and over again. So not one to one. How about this one? Look carefully. Well, um, there. How about that one? Is that one to one or not? What do you think? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. It doesn't cross over anywhere, right? That means that every Every output only happens one time. They're unique outputs. So one to one. How about this one? Is this one one to one or not? No. Definitely not. In fact, you get three spots here, not one to one. How many people understand the idea of one to one? Good, that's fantastic. Well, good morning. Okay, so we have these things called inverses. Now, I haven't even told you what an inverse is yet. So let's talk a little bit about what an inverse is. An inverse are these functions that, quote unquote, undo each other. So here's what that means. It means if I plug something into a function, then the inverse should take what I plugged in and give me back what, or sorry, uh, take what I got out and give me back what I plugged in. So it's like, if I plug in a number three, goes through this function, the inverse will take that output and give me back three. So it will basically undo everything that you did. It's kind of like this. Like if you were cleaning the house, and this guy came behind you and just messed up everything. That would be, your, he would be your inverse. So like you'd go clean the kitchen and he would come along and put everything back the way it was before you cleaned it. Does that make sense? So it's like undoing everything a function did. That's how an inverse works. It takes an operation and undoes it. So it puts everything back to where it was originally. That's this idea of an inverse. It, it, it undoes a couple things. Now we've actually talked about inverses your whole math career. Uh, an inverse of addition. What's the inverse of addition? And yeah, it and does it. How, what's the inverse of division? Sure. What's the inverse of squaring a number? A square root. Yeah, that's that's the inverse uh, idea. Now, what we learned last time was also something called one to one. One to one meant that if a function has an output, every one of those outputs is unique. So we have all these different outputs go, going around. If, if, a, if a function is one to one, it means that none of those outputs is ever repeated. So we talked about that last time with the horizontal line test, and that's where we're left off right now. Now the cool statement is this. A function has an inverse if and only if it's one to one. That's called a biconditional statement. Biconditional means it goes both ways. So a function has an inverse if it's one to one, and automatically if it's one to one, it must have an inverse. Do you see how that works? It goes either way. So if a, if a function does have an inverse, it is one to one. And if it is one to one, it must also have an inverse. The way we write an inverse for some function like f, so for a function f, the inverse is denoted, we use the same letter, f. We use the same letter, however, if we don't want to call this thing an inverse, Here's how you write it. Watch carefully on the board. So for, for a function f, the inverse is denoted still f, but you've got to show it's an inverse, and here's how you do it. Now, please listen carefully. I don't want you to get confused on this. To write an inverse, you say this. There, you put that negative 1 right there. That's a negative 1. You don't say f to the negative 1. Okay, here's the thing. That is not an exponent. It doesn't mean 1 over f. That is not what it means. It's simply the only way that we have to put an inverse of a function. Are you with me on that? So is this an exponent? No. No. It just, it's pronounced f inverse. So let's all say this with me. For a function f, the inverse is denoted, what is that? f inverse. Don't say f negative 1. Okay, don't say that. That negative 1, it, we, we're not even calling it negative 1. It's called an inverse. So that is f inverse. Raise your hand if you're okay with that. And also one thing you need to know is that this thing is also 1 to 1. So a function and its inverse will both be one to one. That has to make sense because they are inverse operations. They're inverse functions. They have to undo each other. So if this function has an inverse, it's this. But then this is also the inverse of that.
that function. So those two things work together. Now, we're going to do a very simple example to illustrate an inverse. Are you guys ready for it? All right. So let's pretend that our function again, function f, has only four points. Okay, watch carefully. I'm going to explain to you how an inverse works. Uh, first thing, can you tell me my inputs, please? What's my input here? Outputs. Good. Here's what an inverse must do. It must give you back what you started with. Now, now pay attention. Here's the, the whole operation of an inverse. What this function does is this takes this number, does something to it, and gives you out that number. Are you with me on that? So you plug in 2, but you get out negative 4. You follow? You plug in negative 1, you get out 13. You plug in 0, you get out 0. You plug in 7, you get out 8. And inverse has to undo that. So tell me, if I originally plugged in 2, and it gave me out negative 4, think outside the box here. Can you tell me what our inverse has to plug in and what it will give me out. I'll give you a hint here. I'll give you a hint. If I plug in 2, that's what, I'm, uh, that's what our inverse has to give me out. Does that make sense? It's got to undo everything. So what number has to go here? A 2 has to go there. What number has to go here? Negative 4. Negative 4. Here's what an inverse does. Watch. Check it out. If you're not following that, here's, here's the whole thing. Some of these people were we're kind of thinking outside the box and get this idea already, but, but watch if you don't. My original function took the point 2 and gave me out negative 4, correct? My inverse has to undo that. So it says, well, if you're plugging in 2 and you're giving me out negative 4, I'm going to take your negative 4 and give you right back the 2. Does that make sense to you? That's what it's doing. It's undoing it. Let's try this next one. This function says, okay, you're plugging in negative 1, I'm going to give you out 13. My inverse has to undo the operation, so it's taking my 13 and giving me out how much? Are you, are you following this yet? Yeah? Okay, good. Oh. Why? Oops. How about the next one? Can you figure out what the next one's going to be? My, my original function takes 0 and gives me out 0. What's the inverse going to do? 0 and 0. Yeah, yeah, that one doesn't change at all, right? And last one, my original function gave me 7. I'm sorry, uh, you plugged in 7, it gave me 8. What's the inverse going to do there? Can you guys figure that one out? Yeah, it says, well, I'm going to take the 8 that you gave me out, I'm going to give you back the 7. It's undoing that whole operation. So basically, what your inverse does is it gives you back what you started with. How many people understood this, this idea? So how would you say in, in English for someone who really didn't understand the inverse, what are you doing from here to here? What are you doing? You're going backwards, sure, you're, you're finding the inverse, but what are you actually doing point by point? Switching. You're switching. Switching what? Input and output. What are the inputs and outputs as far as the coordinates?